Welcome to the Nomadic Network. Just in case you got lost on the way here, this is a Nomadic Network event. Happy Tuesday. Um, I'd love to know where everyone is from. So please utilize that chat. Drop what city, what country, what cool mode of transportation you're riding right now. And let me know. And let me know also if this is your <laughs> first Nomadic Network event or your 54th or you know your second. We welcome everyone back. We're excited for you to have you here. My name is Leah. I'm here with Eileen and Mark and Erica, helping Erica out Hi. with these events. <laughs> um, mm. I am the Los Angeles chapter leader and I am a virtual event host for Nomadic Network, helping Erica and Matt lead this um, this cool network around the globe. I also co-created and co-host the Ticket to Anywhere podcast, which is on YouTube and anywhere you can listen to podcasts. So I'm gonna give everyone a few seconds to figure Zoom out, to wave, to fill that chat up with where you're from. And uh, we'll just get started in a second here. So again, welcome. <laughs> All right, so before we do get started, I um, am gonna, just do a little few housekeeping announcements. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Again, welcome everyone to the Nomadic Network. We are a uh, global group of travel enthusiasts that were inspired by Nomadic Matt. And we're in 22 plus cities across the globe. Uh, holding in-person events where people can network and connect with other travel enthusiasts. And the only requirement is, is that you have to love travel. You didn't, you didn't even have to have gone on your first trip yet and you could come to these events because we're a very inclusive community. And we were all up in the bars and in the restaurants and in the beer gardens mm -hmm. and then Corona happened. <laughs> so like the rest of the world, we transferred yeah. over to virtual yeah. events, which is totally fine because you actually get to be across different time zones, be across um, different countries, different communities, different cultures, and connect with people all over the world in one spot. And we are able to <clears throat> host multiple events per week. So that's what we're doing right now. Give you all kinds of topics on different things um, more and more frequently than we would have in-person events. So okay. a few things to keep in mind. You can turn your camera on. We do love seeing your faces, but you will be muted for the duration of the event as we let Eileen and Mark explain their wonderful selves and how to build a successful YouTube channel. The Q&A will follow the presentation. Uh, if you can please start your question in the chat with the word question, I'll be able to pull it out easily and we, Eileen, Mark and myself will be able to chat about it later. Um, like I said, Use the chat to connect, share your anecdotes, share your stories, your tips, your experiences, ask people what their Instagram handles are, you know, or you can just rename yourself to whatever it is. Replays are available for Patreon members. That will be explained more on the next slide. And we're here to learn, have fun, connect. That's all we can hope for you all is that you make some new connections in this and maybe learn something new. And our speakers are always doing this out of the okay. kindness of their hearts and the passion and the knowledge they want to share with everyone in this room. So we are so grateful that you both are here today. Okay. Eileen and Mark. There you are. Yeah, be here. Oh, you can cut me out of it. <laughs> so, like I said, Patreon community. This is an exclusive community that the, that Nomadic Matt and the Nomadic Network have, where you can get our exclusive replays, personal stories shared by Matt that really aren't shared anywhere else. You can help decide that the content Matt and Nomadic Network put together, you get live Q and A's with Matt, which are my favorite because he literally answers every question and he will stay until he's answered every question and more. Um, free signed gear, signed books, free guides, never before seen stories, photos, exclusive Facebook access where you can ask all kinds of questions and people are so quick to jump to answer because in this travel community, we love helping each other. So it's really, it's a lot of fun. I've met some of my already lifelong friends through this community and so happy to be able to help Erica run these as well. Um, if you know the patron is something that you can't do at this time, we are doing a one-time donation via PayPal. So if you'd like any information about 
either of these programs, just hold your camera phone up to the screen and scan either one of the boxes and then click the link that pops up. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce Eileen and Mark really quickly, so quickly. <laughs> and um, oops. did I stop sharing? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Eileen and Mark are, um, they met in Iceland for the first time, which is awesome. They're filmmakers who first met there. They love to talk about all things travel, which is obviously their favorite subject. And they're here to let us know, you know, how their YouTube channel has really exploded uh, the viewings of their travels. And in their first year, they were selected as a top travel vlog to follow by Insight Guides. So please, to this chat, bring all your questions about YouTube, vlogging, life on the road for them. That's why they're here to answer all of your questions. And now, Eileen and Mark, I will turn the floor over to you. Thanks, Leah. Thank you. Can everybody hear us OK? I guess you can share our screen now. Oh, yes, let's Excellent. share our screen. <laughs> We have attended so many of these events and during this year, it's been so nice to be able to connect with other people <laughs> who love traveling. So we were just delighted when Erica asked us to present at our own. So just hello to everyone around the world. We hope that wherever you are, you're safe and keeping well during these crazy times <laughs> as everyone keeps saying. Um, we are going to share some of our tips and tricks that we've picked up along the way if you have a YouTube channel already that you're trying to grow or maybe you're thinking about starting one. Um, my name is Eileen for anyone who doesn't know me. And I'm Mark, I guess we should go to this slide. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we just want to get right into it, but we really hope you'll have some questions because we would love to answer any that you have um, at the end. So just as a quick bit of background, we thought it would be relevant to tell you that we, we work in film and television. Um, we used to before starting our YouTube channel and we still do now. So I'm a host, a director, writer, and producer. And I'm also a director, producer, writer, camera operator, editor, <laughs> formerly a radio DJ, and of course now we are both YouTubers. That's right, so you wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. um, and there's really no one path to becoming a YouTuber, which is one of the best parts about it, I think. Yeah. Um, and so just to jump right in, if you are thinking about starting a channel, you really need to put the foundation in place. And the first thing, of course, is coming up with a name, which sounds simple, but in our experience is actually not so simple. Easier said than done. Um, you want to pick a name that represents you and your channel, what your channel is about. You want it to be unique, sets you apart, and also easy to say, easy to spell. <laughs> and what, remember that when you um, have your little at handle, it's going to be squished together. So make sure that it doesn't look confusing when it's all squished like that. <laughs> um, and make sure that it's available on all the different platforms because you don't want to start your channel and then go over to Instagram and realize, oops, um, it really helps to have the same branding across all of your platforms just to make it easier for people to find you. And sometimes the easiest name to find is your own name. <laughs> exactly. Hence Eileen Aldis. Yeah, and Aldis is my Icelandic middle name, <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. Um, and you wanna pick a profile photo that shows yourself really clearly. So a close up is good, something where people can instantly recognize you and, and it helps to put it across all of your platforms again, just so that people can instantly connect with you if they're trying to find you. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing for this part is your banner. So your YouTube landing page, your home page, has a banner across the top. And I think the best way to think of that is sort of like a billboard um, that you're driving by really fast and you want to convey a lot of information really quickly. So you want to tell people, you know, what this channel is about, uh, how many videos you're going to be uploading every week, and also the schedule. So knowing when people can come. What times and dates they can sort of expect a video. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and by the way, we have some notes here, which we'll keep referring to to make sure we don't forget to tell so you stay anything on track. important. <laughs> Um, the next thing that is so, so important is to focus. Um, we all have a lot of interests, of course, but especially when you are starting and growing your channel, you really need to have one subject area that all of your videos are about. So focus is really, really important. For us, it's obviously travel. Mm -hmm. um, if you're here, it might be travel too, but if it's not, you know, think about the, something that you're really um, joyful about or interested in. 
Um, what can you talk endlessly about? What brings you joy, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or maybe you have an area of expertise or a special skill that you could share. So those are just things to get you on the right track. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason that it's so important to focus is that people need to know what to expect from your channel. So if they come to your channel and they see, um, you know, videos on a wide variety of subjects from fitness to beauty to cooking, they don't know what they're subscribing to. So they're less likely to hit the subscribe button. They really want to know what to expect. So if they come and they see a whole lot of videos about travel, they think, okay, I love travel. I'm going to subscribe. Right. Um, so it's, it's especially important at the beginning, I think. It's a bit like a TV station. Exactly. And um, people want to know what's on that station. <laughs> right. That's a good point. Okay. So planning ahead. Planning ahead. And by the way, one of my top five favorite photos of Mark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is in Berlin. And that's more or less what Mark looks like 50% of the time. <laughs> I think that was at the end of a very long day of editing. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, you know, if you're traveling somewhere and you want to make videos, really helps to plan ahead. You want to do as much of the research at home beforehand to maximize your time when you're on the ground. And, you know, you're going to save yourself time, probably money, and a lot of stress and energy, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, we like to think about, you know, the history of a place and the culture, the traditions, the food, what kind of foods do you want to try? Um, are there any special events or celebrations going on that maybe happen only at that certain time of year that you could plan to make a video about? Um, so not only those things that you might, you know, research before a normal trip anyway, but when you're vlogging, you really want to think ahead to what videos you want to make and also what realistically you're going to be able to film. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of start to block your time and make a, a schedule, flexible schedule um, of what to do, what day to make sure that you, you get what you need. So if you're going to make a video about the top five foods to try, you need to know what those foods are, um, why they're the top foods, a bit of history about them, where you're going to find them, how late the restaurants open, how much they cost, all of those different things. So that'll just help you um, when things go sideways, <clears throat> which they always do. <laughs> and this photo on the right was uh, actually taken on an uh, epic trip to Russia over 72 hours. So we had to be very structured with our time and make sure that we get all those videos that we want out of that trip. Yeah, that was a bit like amazing race. So we really had to be very um, efficient with our time. Yeah. Um, the next thing that's important, and I can't say this enough, is to be consistent. When you are trying to grow your channel, being consistent is one of the most important things. And without being consistent, it's very unlikely that your channel will grow, or it's gonna take a lot longer. Um, so this goes back to deciding how many videos you're going to make a week, and then doing that consistently. And I think when you're thinking about that, it's so important that you are realistic about all the other demands on your time, mm -hmm. and your schedule. Yeah. It's um, always better to, uh, you know, under promise and over deliver. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you're going to do one video a week, make sure that you can do that one video a week. You don't want to commit to three and then find that you're burning out or you've just run out of time. Or five. <laughs> or five, exactly. Like some daily vloggers. Exactly. <laughs> um, and in terms of when you're going to be uploading, your analytics can help you determine a little bit, you know, who your audience is, where they're watching from, to give you a sense of when they might be logging on to watch. But at the end of the day, I think it's really the most important is what your schedule is. Mm -hmm. So when can you realistically commit to every week, week in and week out over years, <laughs> getting your videos out? Um, so if that's Mondays and, and Thursdays at 2 p.m., then that should be your time. But it, it really comes down to your schedule. Or if it's better for you to upload on weekends, 
go for that. Then do that, exactly. Yeah. And YouTube does have a scheduling tool, which is really helpful for travel vlogging, mm -hmm. um, because one of the things I'm sure you've all encountered are, you know, really bad or slow internet connections. Or no internet. Or no internet connections at all. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many times where we've just been totally unable to upload, and you just have to call uncle after a while. <laughs> um, so if you're anticipating that that might be an issue, you can go into YouTube while you have a good connection, upload, do all of the back end stuff, which we'll talk a bit more later, um, and it will schedule whether you're able to be online or not. So that's a really helpful tool to know about. Yeah, and that actually goes back a bit to the last slide about planning. Uh, if you can plan ahead and actually get some videos done ahead of time, you can schedule those ahead. So if you know that you're going to not have strong Wi Fi, you still have a video up on YouTube ready to come out until the next time you can upload. Yeah, and if you can be a little bit ahead, you know, at least a couple of weeks, then that's going to save you some stress in the moment as well. A lot well. of stress. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the questions I think is how to set yourself apart when there are so many creators and so much content being uploaded all the time to YouTube. And the answer is cheesy, but it's really just <laughs> to be yourself. Um, there's that great, is it Oscar Wilde? Oscar quote? Wilde. Yeah. Trust him about, um, be yourself everyone else is taken already <laughs> and it's so true yeah. um i think you really just need to find your own voice and be creative and give yourself that that freedom mm -hmm. and not try to do things that you've seen other people do uh how are you going to tell the story that's really what it comes down to don't worry about the fact that there's a lot of other people that are making videos nobody is going to tell the video like you will right and at the end of the day you want to make content make the kinds of videos that you would like to watch yourself yeah. I think that's good advice totally um equipment this is uh, something that we can talk about more later if anyone's interested in specifics um but it's a definite myth that you need big fancy camera gear to be a youtuber or make really great travel vlogs um you absolutely do not need fancy expensive equipment to make compelling videos it all comes back to storytelling and of course you know the gear that you have will enhance your storytelling or can to use the right way but it's not a requirement at all mm -hmm. and i wouldn't want that to hold anyone back from starting their channel you know just just make the best quality videos that you can and if that means using your phone use your phone um you can always grow as your channel grows. And um, that's a good strategy because you'll be able to develop a sense of what your needs actually are, which might be different from when you're starting out. And then you can decide where best to invest your, your money. And actually one of our favorite cameras is that one on the bottom right. It's just so small and you can fit it in your pocket and just whip it out when you need to film something. Yeah. So. The one on bigger the is not always better. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Um, so, it, you know, it, it, you can always do a lot with a little bit of gear and um, and upgrade as you go. So and we can get more specific later if anyone has more questions about what, what gear we actually use. Um, all of that said <laughs> <laughs> about gear, you really cannot underestimate the importance of good sound. And when you're watching a video, I think it's a lot easier to tolerate poor visual quality than poor sound quality. Yep. Um, most people will just click off. So again, it doesn't mean that you need to invest in an expensive microphone necessarily, but it does mean, you know, being aware of sounds behind you in the background. And um, by the way, remember that if you don't have the music copyright then you can't monetize your video so if you're in a you know noisy restaurant or something and they're playing top 40s music <laughs> um then that's going to be a problem your if, video will get flagged if you want to monetize it um being aware of wind you know maybe having a little wind sock on your microphone just little adjustments like that to be aware of so that you don't get back to edit and think, oh man, this, this, this is great, but it's incomprehensible <laughs> or there's sound pops um, happening and it's not pleasant to listen to. Yeah. Um, the other thing is music. And there's a lot of free music that you can get. Although I would highly recommend that if you're using free music, you get written permission mm -hmm. to use it because it is possible that, you know, 
people might come back and say, oh, well, that was a mistake. And, and then you have something where you can show, I don't need to take my video down because I do have um, written permission. So that's really important. Yeah, we've used royalty-free music in the past that um, later they decided, I guess, to pull it from being royalty-free and then our video got flagged, so. Yeah. yeah. And flags are not a good thing on a channel because if you get too many, then they'll actually shut your channel down. So you just wanna be aware of those things as much as you can, at least in advance. And sound is one of the areas that will most commonly get you the flag. Yeah. The and, dreaded flag. <laughs> and we now pay for a music database. We personally use Epidemic Sound. Um, actually, I think in all the uh, description box of our last videos, there's um, like a free month trial. Mm -hmm. So if you want to try it, then you can check that out. We love that database. And for us, you know, it's worth paying a monthly fee now because we know that we'll have those music rights guaranteed in perpetuity. Yeah. And music is so important. It's, you know, sound is another way of storytelling, I think. So it just adds another layer to your videos. Totally. Transports people there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Next are some of the back end parts of YouTube. So once you've edited the video, you've done the sound, you have everything like that ready to go. There's a lot of stuff that goes into the back end of YouTube and all of that is going to help your channel and your video gain visibility on the platform and help with the SEO, the search engine optimization. Um, the first thing to do is remember that your title should include as many search keywords as possible. Um, so if you're making, we just did a video about um, Turkish, Turkish street, street food. food. <laughs> um, then you, you know, you really should have Turkish street foods in the clickable title of your video. Um, the other important thing is about the thumbnail. It doesn't matter how good the video is because people are going to click on it based on what the thumbnail looks like. Yes. So I know we all like to think, you know, not not to judge a book by its cover and all of that, but at the end of the we day, we all do it. We all do it, and um, you don't want to do your video a disservice because you've worked so hard on it. So, um, and this step can get very easily overlooked. Yes, yes, especially if you're not working ahead of schedule and you've committed to Tuesday at two p.m. and you've sort of forgotten about your thumbnail and you want to just make sure that you're on schedule, I wouldn't recommend that because, um, you know, the thumbnail is really, really important. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, you know, nice to have a sort of uh, unique but consistent style so that people can recognize your channel um, when they're when they're looking through lots of different thumbnails. Yeah, or if you're doing a series to kind of keep it all uniform. Right. And I also wanted to mention other parts of the back end, um, which are important. So that's your description. So underneath the video in the description box, include as many keywords as you can. And this does affect how you actually write the description. Um, and it's a little bit of trial and error, but making sure that you have as many things that people might be searching or interested in or trying to find listed in the description box. Um, and, and that's going to help the video. There's also um, meta tags and meta tags are really important because they're one of the main ways that people find your video. Mm -hmm. So a meta tag is just a bunch of um, phrases or keywords um, that you have a, a limit of that you can put with your video. So for Paris, for example, if you're doing a video about foods in Paris, I would recommend not putting Paris and foods as two separate words, put Paris foods or what to eat in Paris mm -hmm. or foods in Paris. Um, and it's, it's important to write things as if you're searching for them. Um, so think about how you search for things, you know, um, where to eat in Paris, that might be something you'd look up. And Google, or excuse me, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world after Google. Mm -hmm. um, so just think in terms of how people actually search things and that will help inform the meta tags that you use. Or just do the search yourself and then see what what results you get. Exactly. That would actually match what you're putting out. Right, and meta tags are important. So we can go back to that in a second. Um, cards are another function that you can use. So you, when you're watching YouTube, you might see a little white box pop up in the corner intermittently. And those are suggested videos or playlists or websites that you can put up. Um, so for example, if we're referencing another video that we've made in the past, um, you know, we're about Turkish baths, that was another one, then 
I can put a link to Turkish baths up in the corner just to make it really easy for people um, who might want to click on that right away. Um, subtitles is really important for travel vlogging because mm -hmm. you'll probably have a really international audience and that's something that can take a lot of time. Yeah. But we, trans we try to transcribe all of our videos um, also for deaf viewers and <clears throat> excuse me, then we can translate them into different languages. Too. Yeah, so on this latest series we're doing about Turkey, we definitely wanted to translate all of the subtitles first to English and then translate them to Turkish because there's a lot of Turkish people watching and it's much easier for them to read it. So <laughs> I just saw the time, so we have to keep going. Um, yeah, subtitles are important languages just to make it accessible to as many people as possible playlists and end screen mm -hmm. is what you see at the end of the video that can help um, direct people back to some of the other content that they might be interested in on your channel. Yep. Um, the next thing that's sort of part of this is analytics. Analytics are your friend. <laughs> You're going to get to know your analytics from your channel very well. Um, I would recommend that you download the YouTube Studio app. Mm -hmm. um, which Creator Studio. Creator Studio, which gives you, you know, pretty in-depth analytics all the time. You can just constantly be checking in on them. Um, it's actually and, one of my favorite things. Yeah. It's, I love after we post a video and seeing where everyone's coming from that's watching the video. It's really interesting. And especially when you are, you know, growing your channel and trying to figure out what people are interested in, what they're not interested in, it can help you make those little adjustments so that you're making content that people are interested in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might start talking about X and you can literally see the exact moment of what you say that people click off your video. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, they clicked off as soon as they saw our faces. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, you can see, you know, where people are watching, how old they are, if they're male or female, how long they're watching for, all of these different metrics mm -hmm. that are really, really helpful um, as you're kind of finding out who your audience is, um, as you're trying to, you know, adjust your content as you go. Yeah, and vidIQ is actually another really good tool that um, helps with analytics. It's a free tool. And um, it um, just gives you a lot of things to think about, like what are other people making videos about your competitors, uh, <laughs> if, if you have competitors, or like what other what are other travel channels making videos about, or what's topical right now, like Halloween. So you can kind of tap into that and make videos about those things if you're looking for ideas. Right. Or back in the day on YouTube, there used to be tags or, um, you know, just videos that people are, mm. are doing that are really trendy. And that's a way to kind of get into the algorithm, because if you're making a video, I don't know if there were something about my top 10 beaches in the world and everyone was making videos about <laughs> that. And if you make a video on it and it's in your meta tags, then when people search it, it might bring up your video as well amongst all of the other ones. So it's kind of a way to jump on the bandwagon and, and be part of the, the group that's doing videos on that at the moment. Yeah. Um, engagement is really important. Um, and it's, it's, it's important when you're growing your channel. And I think people get really focused on the number of subscribers a channel has or the number of views, but engagement is really important. Um, equally important for sure. And it's mm -hmm. a wonderful way to make meaningful personal connections with the people who are watching your videos. To me, that's one of the most incredible parts about being a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say engagement, I mean comments on your video, shares, likes, uh, likes and dislikes. Yeah, and watch time. And watch time. So watch time literally refers to the length of time that people are watching your videos. Um, and you know, the algorithm is notoriously confounding, but at the end of the day, you, you need to balance strategy with creativity. So, you know, watch time is important, but it's more important to have people coming back to your channel consistently. Um, so, you know, make sure that you respond to comments. It's an amazing way to get to know people. Um, I love it. <laughs> and you can also put like a, a pinned comment at the top of your video if there's any salient information that you really wanna make sure people know. For example, for us right now, you know, we're in Canada, we're not traveling. And so we just make a little note that um, this was filmed before COVID. That's why you're not seeing us wearing masks. 
um, just so that people know. Or anyone else. <laughs> or anyone else. Yeah. And it's a great way to um, ask a question that people, you know, might think about during your video, like what their favorite food is mm -hmm. <laughs> you've showed or something. Yeah. Um, the next thing is to bring value to the viewer. And I think it's a question to constantly ask yourself is how can the person watching this video walk away with something that is going to be valuable information later. So when you're traveling, think about the things that you would want to know, you know, what do things cost? What did I wish I knew before I went? What should I have packed? What should I have not packed? Um, it can be things as practical as that. Or for me, I'm a huge history nerd. I love to hear about the history of a place why things are the way that they are. Um, so those are all things that you can bring to people mm -hmm. in addition to hopefully being entertaining, <laughs> <laughs> bringing value in that form as well. Um, when you are on the internet in any form, as we all know, it's important to have a thick skin. <laughs> and <laughs> this, was a, this was a road trip in Estonia that went awry. <laughs> Nothing went right. Um, and at, you know, at the end of the day, you can't let negativity deter you because it, it, it's, it's just there. And sometimes criticism is constructive, which is great. It helps you with, you know, making better content. But a lot of the time, um, it, it has nothing to do with you. Um, and one of the worst comments I ever got was right, and I think like right at the beginning, three months <laughs> in or something. And now it's been years, and that comment remains one of the worst comments. Um, and yeah. If I, if I, you know, if I let that stop me, I would never have had all of these amazing adventures after. So I think the best thing to do is just be prepared for it, know that it's coming. And my best advice on negative comments are just to not engage because it's a waste of time. Um, just delete and move on um, and uh, deal with it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so marketing is important because it's like anything, you know, you've put all this effort into making a video that you want to share with people. And if nobody sees it, um, then that's a shame. So when you press upload on YouTube, it's kind of like the beginning. The very beginning. Of, of, of everything. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, starting with family and friends is a good way. How many YouTube or how many Facebook friends do you have that you can ask to, you know, support you as you're starting out? Um, and promoting on other social media platforms is a great idea. And also, as you can see here, doing some uh, different media, uh, you know, whether it's print or a couple of radio interviews here. Uh, this one on the stage was at an event um, sponsored by Air Canada. So, you know, just ways that people who are interested in travel can connect with you and find your channel um, is all really, really important. It doesn't mean spamming other channels' uh, comments because that's probably just the wrong kind of attention. Yeah. Um, but true collaborations when you're talking with other channels that have similar interests, that's a wonderful way to not only make new friends, but you know, introduce your audience to other channels that have similar interests that they might be interested in. Yeah. So I think that those are all, all good things to remember, that you don't just post your video and then go to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, and use all those other social media handles that you got on Twitter and Instagram. Those are great places to promote and each sort of has its own function that's slightly different than YouTube. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, the next thing is to be patient. Just um, remember that when you work hard, it's not only going to, it's not always going to result in a big win um, in terms of views. And you might get a little bit discouraged thinking, well, I've put all this effort in and nothing's <laughs> happening. Um, no one's finding my channel or, or something like that. So just keep uploading, just keep uploading, um, keep making good content and just keep uploading. <laughs> Do not give up. Um, you know, just stay dedicated and, and know that if you keep consistent and you keep making good quality content, you'll get there. The people will come. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you'll find your tribe. Yeah. <laughs> just keep uploading. <laughs> and it's very important that you enjoy the journey along the way. I think with travel vlogging, especially when you're on the road, you have to remember that this is amazing what you're doing. <laughs> 
and you don't want to get too bogged down in you know getting the right shot or making yeah. sure that you you have what you need you need to find that balance um between making a good video and being in the moment and you know just experiencing it um mm -hmm and being vulnerable and all of that. Sometimes that might mean taking a day off <laughs> so that you can just, you know, look around and actually enjoy where you are. Well, there are good days and bad days and like, like anything. And I think you just need to um, sometimes laugh so you don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone who's when traveled things don't go right. knows that things don't always go right. Um, and often those make the best stories. That's right. And you just need to, you know, stay focused on your passion and, and why you love doing this um, yeah. and have fun with what you're doing. So <laughs> this, this is a question we get a lot, which is what's next. Um, of course, there's a pandemic right now, so we are not traveling at the moment, uh, but we are still uploading new content because we have some videos that we filmed before the pandemic that we've still been able to, to um, upload now. So we're looking forward to lots more travels whenever it's safe again. Um, and we are hosting a group trip with Trova Trip for the first time uh, to Bali in Indonesia in October, 2021. So if you'd love to, if you'd like to join, we'd love to have you. In exactly a year. In exactly a year. We were supposed to be there now on our group trip. Um, and of course we're not. <laughs> so <laughs> we postpone it to a year from now. So if you'd love to come, then let us know. And, and that's on the Trova Trips trip website. Exactly. Um, so we just want to thank you again and hope that um, this has been helpful. If you have specific questions that we'd be happy to answer them. Um, if you're thinking about starting a channel, I hope you will because it's just the most amazing experience and we have loved it so much. Yeah, and anyone can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we will throw it back to the lovely Leah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, I'm so sorry. Was that last slide your contact info? It well, was. I don't know why I'm just blanking out. Do you mind leaving it up for just another? Should I throw it up again? <laughs> sure. Yeah, 30 seconds so people can, you know, catch you on YouTube or the gram, wherever. Okay. Can you see Perfect. it? Perfect. Yes, I can. Right. So cool. everyone, this is where you can reach Eileen and Mark on YouTube, on every uh, social media channel available on the planet. <laughs> So this was awesome. And I love how you guys jumped right into it. They're like, you're like, pick a title. Here are the keywords. Here's the gear. Like straight to the point, no fluffiness. You know? Well, we knew we had limited time. And then, well, but it's, it's interesting because you, you know, it's like marketing afterwards. It's like, this is literally how you start it. Get a camera, start filming, start a channel. You know, that's the info that people want, that practical information. So with that, um, we have a lot of great questions, some of them technical coming out of that. So I can just jump right into them. Also, I just realized I'm going to Bali at the same time you guys are next. No way. Week, so. Yeah. yeah, so cool. maybe we'll meet up. We'll meet up. <laughs> that is awesome. Because you're like, oh, we're going to Bali October of next year. I'm like, wait, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, oh, man. OK. Oh, there's a lot of great questions coming back oh, in. All right. Um, the first one is from Erica, which is a good one to start us off. It's how did you decide to start your YouTube channel and what was the first iteration like and the first <laughs> few videos? <laughs> so we started the channel in 2015 in November and the first video we made was a travel vlog. We were doing a road trip to Seattle. Mm -hmm. so you can go back and see that in all its glory. It features a roadside stop at Denny's. <laughs> nice. Actually, it was to Portland. I'm sorry. And Seattle was our first stop Seattle was our from first Vancouver. Stop. Right. So we were going to Portland for a week and we basically ended up eating the whole time, which is what you do in Portland. <laughs> um, and we started the channel because, I mean, we were already working in the, you know, digital media space and film and TV, um, doing those kinds of things. And I was watching a lot of YouTube and I just love the community aspect of it. Um, you know, a, a way to meet people and find people who love the same things that you do on the other side of the world. I just thought it was so cool. Mm -hmm. And we had always been travel lovers um, mm -hmm. separately. And then we met traveling, like you said, in Iceland. 
So um, it's it's always been a priority for us. It was the number one thing for us that we love talking about all the time and could make endless videos about. And so. we, we were making videos anyway, to be honest. Um, we have videos from all of our travels over 12 years um, that we were doing anyway. So it felt very natural for us to just start sharing them with people on the internet. <laughs> we were making vlogs. We didn't even know what vlogs were. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I knew what one was until like two years ago. So, like what is this new made up term of vlog? <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine how many external hard drives you guys have to be honest. <laughs> it's oh. funny to say that because today I was working at my desk and I counted 25. Shut up. Yeah. No. Yep. <laughs> yep. We have buckets and buckets of them. You need to put them in a fireproof safe or something. <laughs> I know. It keeps me up at night, honestly. Oh, when my goodness. To them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have um, quite a few people. I know you guys mentioned cameras. So I had a, quite a few people ask camera about cameras specifically, and I'm going to wrap them all kind of into one question. Um, okay. Anu, Anu Karate, um, as well as Larry, you know, both said, do you suggest a GoPro or a good smartphone will do? or um, Larry has a small camera such as a Sony RX100, is your similar. Um, can you detail again exactly which cameras you have, which you usually bring? Um, and if you have any recommendations, please let the audience know. Well, as we were saying, uh, you can start with your phone. I mean, the optics on them nowadays are so amazing. We, we have a friend with a very huge channel and she just literally uses her iPhone. Um, but we love the Canon G7X Mark II. Mm -hmm. um, it's super compact. It's the one that I generally love because it's 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 small. It looks like a point and shoot, but it has a, a big lens and a flip up screen so that when you're vlogging, you can see that you're in the frame and it's really discreet. So, you know, if you're in a museum or something, it doesn't freak people out when you pull out a big camera. Um, and the optics have, are really nice. It looks really crisp. And, and that's comparable to the Sony. And RX. the price point for the, again, it's the Canon G7X. I have the Mark II. Um, is very reasonable, I think, for the quality. So it's a really good one for vlogging, I think. The Mark III is uh, 4K, but we've actually heard a lot of issues with it. I don't know if anyone here has one um, about overheating and that kind of thing and autofocus. So we just stayed with the Mark II. <laughs> we love the Mark II. So yeah, uh, we also sure. have a Panasonic GH5, <laughs> which is a DSLR. Um, it was in a few of those pictures. And that's what we have the big road mic on top of. Um, so that's sort of for more of our cinematic shots. Like uh, the, the slow-mo. We do have a GoPro as well. Um, so we, we love using the GoPro for more adventure style stuff or when I'm worried about getting wet, <laughs> take the <laughs> GoPro or getting really cool shots if you're on a motorcycle or a car, sticking it in random places. Um, it's a really good extra to have. It's like having an extra camera on set. It's a really good one to have in your yep. kit. I would definitely have a GoPro or um, I think DJI maybe makes one now. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure. And we have a drone as well. So um, mm -hmm. nice. we have the Mavic. Uh, the Mavic 2 Pro. Mm -hmm. Which Perfect. folds up uh, for traveling and but we, we didn't always have this gear. And that's why we were, we were saying, you know, as you keep as you keep traveling, keep vlogging, you'll find what works and what doesn't. So we have downsized our gear quite a bit. We've yeah. gone from two bags to one bag and it's so much easier that way. We decided it would be a good idea to do a hundred days in Europe with just carry on. <laughs> nice. And so that meant really downsizing our <laughs> equipment. Yeah. Um, yeah. To the smallest stuff we could get. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that's interesting because I have a, I was going to say, I was going to add on to that. You were talking about um, larger cameras. Oh yeah. I have a story. Of, oh my goodness. I can't even think right now. Anyways, thank you for letting us know what your equipment was, but I wanted to add to that. Um, the new post pandemic mm -hmm. era of traveling. I actually just went to Chichen Itza in Mexico last week, you guys. And this is also I a case saw. Yes, this is also a case for starting your YouTube channel with a smaller camera, such as your iPhone X or a GoPro. If you have a DSLR or something like your Canon G7X, Chichen Itza won't let you in with it. So if you're there okay. as a travel, yeah. travel vlogger and you're like, I wanna get all this, but all I have is this large DSLR, this video camera, guess what? You won't be able to get any content 
because the new rule is they won't let you in with it. Now, if you had a GoPro, your phone is fine, obviously. If you had a GoPro, it was still 45 pesos, which is almost $2 which to us may not be anything, but could you imagine if your whole point of the trip was to go to Chichen Itza to film content and you only had a large camera and now you couldn't let in with it because these are the new pandemic rules. These are the new COVID-19 rules. You can't bring it in. So- um, Not to mention been, like the whole time you spent getting to Chichen Itza only to be turned, around, turned away yes, at the gate. Yes. Yeah. So that is a case for, I think starting, you know, the barrier to entry doesn't have to be so high as purchasing a $7,000 camera or having the best equipment out there or multiple equipments out there, like you guys said, start with a great phone, start with your GoPro. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that also goes back to the planning that we were talking about. And you would know that if you were planning ahead to know that you can't bring that gear in. So planning mm -hmm. is very, very important. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. And with, with your phone or with a vlog camera, I think, you know, just avoiding um, the garden hose like this or shaking it as much as possible. Because um, if someone needs a gravel to watch your video, <laughs> then yeah. it's not very pleasant for them. Um, but that, you know, you, that doesn't affect the type of gear that you have. Those are just basic things you would keep in mind anyway. So do not let it hold you back for sure. Sure. And this is silly, but I learned how to make the resolution. I only have an iPhone 8 Plus, but I was switching off between my iPhone for social media and my GoPro for actual content, right? And I learned how to turn up the resolution on my video camera on my phone to make it yeah. 10 times better. And I was like, yeah. this is life changing. Like, yeah. Yeah. So if anyone yeah. wants to know how to do that, you can come to myself or Eileen or Mark after this and we'll, let you know, <laughs> we'll show you how to do that. So you don't need a fancy camera to start. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, Anu Karate wanted to also know, where did you get the royalty free music from and how did you get written, written permission or how do you get written permission from people? Do you reach out to them? Um, also, please suggest a good brand for a microphone if, if you do have any suggestions. All equipment. <laughs> well, when it comes to written permission, that's a good question. Um, I find that when you're on YouTube for a while, you might get emails from composers or, or different artists who are creating music. So they're music creators and, you know, it can be potentially a great collaboration. So they might write you and say, hey, if you'd like to use any of my songs, um, you can check them out here. I'd love for you to use them in your videos. That would be a situation where you just want to make sure that you have written permission from them um, that, that you can actually do that. So instead of just saying, great, sounds good to say, just want to confirm I can use this track in this video, um, in perpetuity mm -hmm. or however technical you want to be, uh, just, it, it helps them too, but that's something that just along the way, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. Um, and we use epidemic sound, which you do pay a monthly fee for. I think it's reasonable for the, the database that it is. But there's different um, databases that you can use. And for us, it's worth it. But when you're starting out, it might not be. And YouTube actually right. has its own built-in audio library. I think it's called YouTube Audio Library. <laughs> and um, it's there's actually some really good, super funky music on there. And like, I love music. So I probably spend a lot, way too much time finding the right songs. But I think it really pays off in the end. And the okay. microphone question, um, oh, yeah. we have a, a Rode mic. We also have used Sennheiser and Sony mics in the past. They're all good in different ways, but that shotgun Rode mic is um, is a good option often. Especially if you're traveling, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a really big Sennheiser. You might have seen it in one of the photos. Boom. It's insane to travel with that thing. Yeah, but that's <laughs> a, a, it's a directional microphone, which is helpful if you're in a really loud, a busy place, like a restaurant, um, where mm -hmm. you're really just trying to focus in on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. All right. And awesome. I think a bunch of the gear is listed in our videos. So if you click in our description oh, box, you'll see everything that we right. uh, use there. Okay, we'll make sure to drop that in the chat as well. So people who just missed what you said um, will know that. Uh, now I wanna talk about editing because we had a lot of questions about editing and I wanna group them into what are some of your favorite editing apps? And do you, Eileen and Mark, edit your videos separately or together? Um, what are some good apps for beginners? How long does it typically take for you guys to edit one video? Let us, let us know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there, well, is, there is no typical, I guess. I guess it really depends where you're starting. Um, you could probably go like really basic and just get some free software off the web. Um, 
I think iMovie comes installed on a lot of laptops, or at least it used to. Um, so when you're really starting out, that's a good one. We use Adobe Premiere. Um, they have like a desktop version of it and also a, like a version of it on your phone. Um, so depending again, if you're traveling and you wanna edit on the fly, um, but we just bring our laptops everywhere and use the desktop version, um, as well as sometimes we use After Effects, um, Photoshop, I think the nice thing with editing is that it you know it can grow with you as you get more comfortable as an editor. So there are basic programs that um, are a little bit clunkier for you know professional. It doesn't have enough bells and whistles, but it's good when you're starting out because you just have the basic tools kind of as you're learning. Mm -hmm. And then you know when you want to upgrade, then there are other programs like Adobe, for example, that just gives you a lot more options. So. If you're thinking, oh, I feel constrained, I want to be able to do this and this, then that would be the time to, you know, upgrade to Adobe. I also think, you know, if you give yourself enough time and, and stick to it, you can also just start with Adobe and, and figure it out. That's, yeah. that's, that was the first program that I learned on. So I think you could do that too. And the other part of the question is that we edit all of our videos together. <laughs> so. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, that's so good to know. I started using Adobe Rush too a few um, yeah. months ago and Adobe Rush, you guys, is literally made for YouTubers, like people on the go. It's like a TikTok version, but in Adobe. So you're sitting there splicing things, a video, but you're doing it on your mobile phone and Adobe Rush is free on your mobile phone. Um, and it's basically, it's an editing program, but for people on the go. So you could like edit it on a train on your phone and <laughs> post it to wherever. So it's perfect for people like me who just Adobe Premiere is like too much for me. <laughs> that's my <laughs> podcasting partner. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good that it's free. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's free. yeah. Free on mobile on your desktop. I believe you do have to pay for it. But if you have the whole Adobe suite, then it just comes included. Right. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we, we pay for the whole suite. So we, we yep. get it all. It's so yeah, worth it. Like, I think it's like $50 a month or something. It's like 52 bucks a month or something. Yeah. It's worth yeah. it if, if that's what you're going to be, you know, if that's what you aspire to do is create content. I think it's yeah. definitely <laughs> worth it. For sure. um, I want to flip, uh, switch gears back to gear again, really quickly. Um, Amy uh, at go with less. She wants to know when you're walking and recording, it's a two part question. When you're walking recording, how do you keep your camera from not looking bouncy? And then another part question for me, because the inner mama in me is like, oh my God, please tell me you guys have insurance on all of your gear. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> yes, mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't, we definitely need insurance. So we, we have health, medical insurance, of course, and then we have insurance for all of our gear. So, um, you know, that's, that's really important, especially if you do have more expensive gear, um, you know, that's something you don't want to be without. Um, and then I can talk about stabilization, you want to say? You go. Well, it depends on the camera a little bit. Um, and I, I was just going to have an anecdote because when we went to, I was thinking about changing my vlog camera from this Canon G7X from the Mark one to the Mark two, but I wanted to look at a whole suite of other cameras. So I, I was like oh. the girl in the camera store, <laughs> fake vlogging all around the store <laughs> as I tried different cameras. Um, and I was shocked at how different they all were. So some of them are, re I mean, you just can't help the bounce. Total bounce, yeah. So it's really not the user it's more the gear, I would say. And so it, you really have to give it a try. Don't, it's not you, <laughs> it's not shaky hands. Um, and that is a, a place where the Canon G7X does a really good job is keeping it smooth. And if you don't wanna go to a camera store, you can't during COVID right now, a lot of um, good videos on YouTube, tech channels doing side-by-sides mm -hmm. where you can kind of see exactly what the level of um, stabilization is that might be helpful. Also, the iPhones have really good stabilization inside. Like we've actually gone running before <laughs> and filmed and it's like perfectly smooth. It's amazing. Yeah. So just, yeah, check on your phone. It might be a good vlogging option. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. Patrice, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Patrice wants to know, do you ever use stock video footage interspersed with your own? 
usually no, but actually we were looking into that recently for, I think two videos ago, we did a video about going to a Turkish bath in Istanbul for the first time, um, which was really interesting. We loved it, but unfortunately because of the nature of it, we weren't allowed to film inside the actual bath. Mm -hmm. And so in the end, we didn't use it, um, but we were looking into it to see if there was something that reflected our experience that would give people some insight into what it was like just to help with a visual. But in the end, the stock footage- The footage was really funny and it was like, <laughs> It was all very sexual. <laughs> Everyone's just. <laughs> it, they were, we were like, this is not what it's like. They, they were enjoying the spa a lot. Yeah. Um, and it didn't reflect our experience. <laughs> so it didn't feel appropriate. But, you know, that, that was an instance where you, you can look into it. Stock footage, um, you know, in our other production jobs can be very, very expensive. So I would just caution you when it comes to using stock footage. You know, you might want to get. Um, uh, a membership to have um, unlimited if you're using it a lot but if you're just buying one shot two shot three shot it can be 300 bucks right there and be so. careful with the database because a lot of them will say that you have unlimited access but it's only to a certain amount of clips mm -hmm. it's like 80,000 clips out of the million you have unlimited access to so you really have to read the fine print exactly yeah. sure okay great um, there, everyone, there is a lot of great chatter going on as well in the chat. So if you want to, if you have to bounce for whatever reason, we're going to go a little bit after because it is the six, six o'clock Pacific time mark now. But if you want to save the chat down, there's three little dots at the bottom right hand of your screen and zoom. Click those three dots and click save chat. It will save the chat to your computer so you can go back and read all this amazing information later. Um, thank you, Eileen and Mark for staying for staying with us for a little bit. We have so many great questions and so many things keep popping up because people are thinking of new things. So Colin wants to know, do you guys make videos full time or do you have other sources of income? And can you discuss a little more of the monetization aspect? Hmm. Yeah, we, uh, we actually have um, other jobs. We work in television. Um, so like we, I don't know if you saw at the beginning but we're producers, director, camera operator, editor, so we do a lot of stuff in, in the television world. Um, and that's actually why we know about stock footage so much right now is we just produced a few music videos for a, 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 one of the Irish tenors. Um, so we do a lot of that kind of stuff on the side, which is what helps us go traveling. Um, and, and so we, we do both. Um, it is definitely uh, an option to do content creation as a full-time job, of course. Um, and the way that people monetize um, is there's a bunch of different ways. The first way is through Google AdSense. Mm -hmm. And those that's the revenue from all of the ads that are run before, during and after your videos. Um, and you have a little bit of control over that, but not entirely. That's really directed from the top from YouTube. Um, and so every month, your channel generates a certain amount of revenue from from views. And, and that's just based on views, basically. Um, so the more, the more views that you get, the more revenue you're gonna get. And it's also calculated based on where those views are coming from. So if you have an audience that is primarily American, um, those are worth more. And if you have a, a more diverse global audience, then there's going to be different rates that apply for all of like a commercial. So if you buy a commercial during the Super Bowl, it's going to cost you a lot more than not the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. if you think of it that way. Um, so that's one way. And that's, I guess you could call passive income because that's coming in um, just as your channel mm -hmm. exists every month. And then of course there are sponsorships. So brand collaborations, mm -hmm. sponsored content. Um, and, and in order to, in, in my opinion, in order to do it full time, um, then you need to be doing not only AdSense, but, but brand collaborations. Yep. So those are the main, main areas of monetization. Yeah. Hope that helps. Yeah, that absolutely does. Um, okay, let's see. So Dana wants to know for someone with a blog and a YouTube channel, is it bad for analytics to have a video on your channel and have the same video embedded into your blog posts or should someone make two separate videos? Dana currently only uses YouTube as a video repository. 
sorry, so she's asking if you should put in, embed the video from your YouTube onto your blog or make two separate videos? Correct. Okay. I, I would argue that it's, it's, it's totally fine to have it on YouTube and on your blog because the blog is driving traffic to YouTube, which YouTube is happy about. The, the more YouTube can keep people on the platform, the better. So if you are driving people to YouTube, then that typically gets rewarded by YouTube. I, I agree. And I don't think that the amount of time to make double the amount of videos is going to be a good return for you because that, that's a lot of time. Right. Absolutely. And <laughs> yeah, <let's work. laughs> also put your blog in the chat. So yeah. We can Hi, see Dana. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it is it the new algorithm now. I don't know how new it is, but YouTube is only pri is prioritizing heavily videos that are longer than 10 minutes w or what, what can you guys speak to that? What's your uh, findings on that? Yeah. Now? The YouTube algorithm is kind of like playing chess against a computer. <laughs> Um, it's, it's always changing and I, um, there are a lot of rumors about the algorithm and it is true that lately it's more driven by watch time. So the amount of time that people spend watching your video. So in essence, what that means is if you make a five minute video and people watch the whole thing, hundred percent, you are less rewarded than if you make a 20 minute video and they only watch 50% because they're still watching 10 minutes. So they're watching twice, I don't want to confuse everyone, but they're watching twice the amount of time. So that's rewarded by YouTube. So the point is to get people's eyes on the platform for as long as possible. And it doesn't matter whether you're able to hold their attention from one end of your video to the other. It really just comes down to how long they're watching. But I tend to think <laughs> that you should only give that so much of your attention um, because you it'll You'll drive go mad. it'll drive you crazy. <laughs> and really, you want to make you want to make good content. And the mm -hmm. fact is that sometimes that means a twenty minute video, and sometimes it means a three minute video. Mm -hmm. um, and especially for travel vlogging, when there's all of these different you know things in play, and you're not just in your bedroom deciding how long to talk about, you know, a product or an experience or something. You don't, you can't always predict exactly how long it's going to be. So you don't want to run the clock on a video and have it be boring because right. that's not good content and people are going to click off anyway. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely does. Now, um, I learned this the hard way <laughs> with social media a few weeks ago, but do you guys have your, I know you have your presence on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, but what if all of those go down? Do you have a website? Do you have like a newsletter? Like where else is your content stored that where others can see it? This is a really good point. Something that we're, we've, we've been thinking about a lot and it's just one of those things that we should have done by now. <laughs> we haven't. Um, but it's a very good point, you know, um, the platform is your boss and if the platform goes down then you you know people don't have a place to find you so if you can it's a really good idea to have a website um a, a, a place a real estate on the internet that's your own that's not dependent upon some other platform where people can find you and and really that's the most important thing about it i think yeah just a landing page where if all the lights go out on all the other platforms you can all find each other again somewhere. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Um, Dana had another. Honor to do the list. Yeah. Yes. It's okay. Coming. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mine too. <laughs> um, okay. Dana had another great question. Do you come up with a story or a topic before you film or figure it out after you have the clips recorded? For example, you know, I just saw, oh, top seven places to picnic in Paris. Like, did you go to Paris thinking, wait, I'm going to find the top seven places or were you there already eating? And you're like, oh, we should do a segment on top seven places to eat here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I actually don't remember with that video. I actually forgot we made that video. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's, you know, it's kind of a mix of the two. I think planning ahead is really important 
because um, you do want to have a sense of what videos you want to make. But of course, like inspiration strikes on the road and mm -hmm. you might find something or see something and think, oh my God, I didn't even know this existed. Maybe other people don't know either. We've got to make a video about this. Um, I get ideas from viewers sometimes. We made a video in Paris actually about um, the, what's it called? The Promenade Plante, Promenade Plante. Where it's this old railway that they've turned into a really long, beautiful park. And I hadn't heard of it before. It's a bit like the High Line in, in New York. It's just like the High Line. Um, and it's amazing. And uh, so someone in Iceland, who's Danish, <laughs> told me about it while I was in France. So we went and we made a video about it. And so it's, it's just kind of organic. Um, things happen that way sometimes. And sometimes it's a result of planning ahead. So a little bit of both, I think. One of the most amazing experiences was uh, arriving in Brunei and discovering that there was this three-day um, uh, Hari, Raya. Hari Raya festival, I guess you can call it, where you could go into the Sultan's palace. And people were like, oh, you must have come here for this. <laughs> we're like, no, <laughs> we're just, we just happen to be here on the three days that it's happening. So, um, so sometimes you plan for it and that's great. And sometimes just coincidence rewards you <laughs> and it works out. All right, okay. Yeah, that make, that, I, that makes sense because sometimes you get even better ideas when you're already there, right? Or you want to change what you had previously thought. You were like, oh, let's do this. Wait, no, now that I'm here, let's focus on X, Y, Z. So it makes sense. Yeah. Good to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Patrice also wants to know, do you, do you guys have to get releases for people in a scene, like even in a public place in a crowd? Can you explain some of that? That's a good question and it's becoming more and more relevant and topical as YouTube grows and as people monetize their videos, this is becoming more important. Um, and there are differences in how each country has laws about these things. So for example, we were in Finland a year ago and um, they are one of the first countries to start thinking about these things. Um, and so we made a, a really concerted effort to, you know, not show people's faces or, um, I don't know, just crop them out or have me with people's backs or things like that to be respectful of that. In general, you know, um, it doesn't really apply at the moment. It's not like a commercial release where you would have to get things signed for sure. Um, but it, I think it's going to possibly change. So it's good to keep that in mind. And, you know, if you're interviewing someone on the street or you're chatting with a local, it's never a bad idea to at least have some sort of informal written permission um, in the form of an email. I'm going to be vlogging. Is that okay? If that's something mm -hmm. that you're worried about. Right. Right. Okay. Vlogs on considered commercial release. Um, just looking at the chat. Okay, so I have a, a great question that will, you guys can de detail everything. I think this will be the last one, everyone. So once again, um, reach out to Eileen and Mark directly if you guys have any questions. They're super active on all their social media channels. So they'll definitely get back to you, friendliest people ever. Um, Tracy <laughs> wanted to know if you can walk us through your workflow pro process. Um, you know, like YouTube, the creation, photography, filming, like how hard is it to keep everything organized? What are some like PM tools or organization tools that you guys use and, and what's your, you know, mental process like? Uh, well, I, I love making lists. I make lists about lists on my list. Um, I don't know if anyone is the same, but I love me a list. So um, I have different apps for different lists. I'm a big fan of the to-do app, which is Microsoft where you can make sub lists. Um, <laughs> and that's really helpful because you can check things off as you go. So, um, you know, you might have an ongoing list, like uh, someone leaves a comment on a video from, I don't know, um, Malaysia. And I think, well, I wanna go back to Malaysia. Someone just told me about a food that I should try or a place that I should go. And I'll have like an ongoing list of suggestions that I've had from people, for example. And you just add to it and add to it. Even though you don't know when you're going back to Malaysia, you have all of that ready to go um, when you do. So in terms of actual workflow, um, well, a lot of the planning, of course, before we get to the destination, and we, we both do that. Mm -hmm. um, a, ton, a lot of research. 
a ton of research, a ton of planning um, so that you know as much as possible before you go. And then, you know, being ready to be flexible, like you said. Yeah, um, it was actually great on our trip to Europe, our hundred days in Europe trip. Um, we had planned, I think, five weeks ahead, like five weeks into the trip we had planned. And it was so amazing to just show up and know where we were staying every night. And then we caught up to a certain point <laughs> and it was like, okay, now it's stressful. We need to figure everything out on the fly. <laughs> so. And when it comes to shooting, I mean, we, we, we always both have a camera in our hand. Um, so we're able to pick off shots as we see them and think, okay, I'm gonna get that. Can you get that? Um, just to make sure that we have as much coverage as possible. And, you know, you really have to be careful about saving your footage, organizing it. Yeah. To be a good editor, you have to be organized or you'll drive yourself crazy with the amount of footage that you have. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of neatly labeled folders. Yeah, so that you can also go back to it if you're making a video later about, you know, the top 10 restaurants of your travels, you have all of that information laid out and it's just get, your future self will thank you trust me <laughs> if you're organized about it um we always you know we edit together we put everything together we also use lightroom which is an adobe application mm -hmm. which is really great for offloading your footed or photos into so if we're in finland we just put all our fo photos into a finland folder a russia folder whatever so that it's easy to find them later on um, because we take a lot of photos and it's really easy to lose them. I have about 60,000 photos on my phone right now. So <laughs> it can get a little bit overwhelming. And I would recommend if you're, if you're worried about, um, you know, having your phone lost or stolen or damaged, all of which we have experienced at various times. If, if you're not someone who typically uses, you know, the cloud or something like that, while you're traveling is the time to be someone who uses the cloud, um, just to make sure that you have that peace of mind so that your beautiful photos don't go away if your phone goes away. Yeah. You can sleep a lot better. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> um, you, I thought I had the most photos on my phone. I have like 32,000, but I just met Eileen who has double what I have. <laughs> Whose brand new phone basically doesn't work because it's so full of photos. Oh my goodness. Well, that's also why you have 25 external drives. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we oh, need wow. Um, <laughs> Leah, I just wanted to um, add one thing because I saw in the chat something pop up. I don't know who asked this, but I think I saw someone ask, are you ever too old to start? And the answer is unequivocally, no. <laughs> So I just wanted to make that really clear. You are never too old to start anything in my opinion, but for travel vlogging, the same goes. There are wonderful channels of people of all ages, all demographics, um, and, and I think it's, it's wonderful. Um, and there's a whole, a whole niche, a group of people who are looking for more of that kind of content and relatability. So I think it's a wonderful idea. You are never too old to start. <laughs> That is the best note to leave on. <laughs> so thank you for bringing that back up. And I fully support that, you guys. You're just, the time is going to pass anyway, so you might as well do something you want with it, right? So Well, and it's an there. amazing, it's an amazing archive for you to look back on later. Yeah, it's a time capsule of your travels. You know, what could be better than that? 100% it is. So once again, thank you both so much for all of your brilliant information on this. I'm sure there were some questions that I missed in the chat. I'm sorry for those questions who didn't get answered. But like I said, Eileen and Mark are great. They will answer your questions directly if you just reach out to them and definitely subscribe to their YouTube channel. You could see their favorite Turkish foods and where these seven spots to picnic in Paris next time we get there. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm just going to share um, a few closing thoughts. Um, if I can get this in presentation mode. All right, everyone. So you were at a nomadic network event, the nomadicnetwork.com forward slash events. Have all of our events for the next two weeks. You'll see we started here with Mark and Eileen's. We also have one tomorrow on crafting pitches. We have a travel happy hour and we have the future of student travel with flight who's 
presenting a very own um, Carmela from Flight is presenting. And then next week we'll be back with Jamaica and over tourism to under tourism. If you go to the website, they'll have all of the events for the next month or two. It's, it's uh, pretty jam packed, but we're excited to host you. And oops, again, Patreon community, like I said, you'll get all these like VIP and exclusive perks that are only available to Patreon members. Um, I'm pretty sure I conveyed how excited I was at the beginning of the presentation, but if you want to see more for yourself, just hold up your phone and scan this and see what else you can get and what it takes to join that community. Um, and if you can't, for whatever reason, we are doing one-time donations via PayPal. So hold up your phone to either of the QR codes to learn more information. And like we said before, Eileen and Mark, we it would we just wouldn't be the same if it was myself, Erica, and you two here chatting. And people were here because they really wanted to know and they were so interested. And thank you for even the technical aspect of everything. That's the stuff people really want to hear. Like, should I get this camera? Or should I get this camera? They want you to tell them yes or no, or maybe or whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is cheaper, exactly, et cetera. So thank you again. Um, everyone else, thank you for being yeah. part of this travel community and coming for information like this. This is so helpful and this is, the perfect time to start the YouTube channel. So uh, thank you all. And we'll see you next time. And Mark and Eileen, you're great. There's not much more I could say. I, I have a billion more questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, we, if you had a question we didn't get to answer, then by all means, just reach out to us in one of those um, ways we listed. And just thank you for making the time. I hope everyone stays well and we're all sending love from Canada. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thanks for having us. <laughs>